Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Ben, and welcome to another Godot tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss the filter function on arrays. So I have a test project set up right here. I've got this levels folder, and inside the folder there is a level1.tscn, which has a single icon in it, and a level2, which has two cut two icons in it. Both of them have this level script attached to them. The script actually doesn't contain anything. Uh, it doesn't need to for this example, but it is attached to both levels and it's in this levels folder right here. Now inside of my, I have a world scene here and I have a script attached to it and I have a uh, const right here that is just that path. So the levels path right here. And then in the ready function, I am creating a new directory, or a new dir access object by calling open. So dir access dot open and then passing in the folder path. And that is going to give us this dir access object. And this object um, has a few functions on it where we can access stuff inside of a directory. And in this case, we just want the get files function. And you can see that this returns a packed string array. So we're gonna come back into our world script here. And uh, so because this returns a packed, C, uh, packed string array, we actually wanna cast it as an array because we want to take this array um, and filter it. So let's print out what it contains right now. So we'll print file paths like this and run the game. And down here at the bottom, we can see we have level.gd, level1.tscn, and level2.tscn. And those are the files inside of our levels folder stored in an array, which is what we'd expect. But now we want to filter this. So we're going to use Godot's filter function, which is part of the array class. So we can hold control, click on this, and scroll down until we find filter, click on that. We can see that it takes a method, and in the documentation it teaches us that this method is going to take some element from the array, and it is going to um, return true or false uh, based on whether that element fulfills whatever requirements we have set for it. In this case, each element is going to be a string path right here like we see this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say var file, or we already have file paths. So file paths equals file paths dot filter. And again, the reason we had to cast this to an array is because get files returns a stringed or an array of strings and it doesn't have the filter function. So then we can pass in a function into this. And we could create a function down here, but for convenience sake, we're gonna actually create a function in line. So we'll say func, parentheses, and we know that each element of our array is going to be a, a file path. Although it's not actually the, it's more like a file name actually, because it's not the actual path. So we'll do file path and it will be a string and cast it, do semicolons and then tab in like this. So we're passing a function into our filter function. And it needs to return true or false. Now what kind of filtering do we want to do with these? Well, what I wanna do is I want to only, I want this array to only contain files that end in .tscn. So I want to ignore the .gd file. So what we're gonna do is we'll say file name dot ends with and then pass in .tscn. So file paths equals file paths dot filter and we have our function. It takes an element, which in this case is our file name. Could name this whatever we want, but just to be descriptive, I named it file name. And then we're gonna return true or false. And in this case, if it ends with .tscn, that will be true. It will keep that file name in the array. If it doesn't end with .tscn, it will return false. 
and it will remove that file name from the array, thus filtering the array of anything that doesn't end in .tscn. Then we can print file paths like this, run the game again, and down here we can see now we have level one and level two. Now, as a mini challenge for this video, I'm going to challenge you. So that's the gist of the video. If that's all you wanted, you got it, you're good to go. But I have a mini challenge for you. So if you come into the array here, you can see we have another function called map. And what map does is it allows you to make some sort of change to every element in the array. So you pass in a function, it has an element argument, and then you make, you return that element, but changed in some way. In this case, they're multiplying it by two. So we have these file names, but wouldn't it be nice if they were actually file paths? So we had the whole path to these files. You can use the map function in order to do that. So the challenge is, in the same way that we filtered each element in the array, I want you to try and map call, uh, use the map function on each element in the array to add the level folder path to the file name, so before it, as a prefix, right? That way we would have the correct path. So I'm gonna have you pause your video right now and try to do that, and I'm gonna show you how to do it in just a minute in case you run into any issues. Okay, I'm assuming you tried it on your own. Now we're gonna do it together. So we're gonna say file paths equals file paths dot map. And we're gonna pass in a function and we'll have a file name again. Could be called string, but I'm just gonna call it file name. And then down here, we're gonna return level folder path plus file name. Okay, so now we've used the map function to add the folder path to the file name. And if we print this, now we get the correct paths to these different levels inside of our folder. Now, as a last little tidbit, say we wanted to, um, say we wanted to load a random one. We could say get tree dot change scene to file. And then we could say file paths dot pick random. There we go. Now, that's another little function on arrays that is useful. So we can go to our file paths and we can pick a random file path and load that. So let's see which level we get. We got level two. We can try again. I think because we, have, we haven't randomized the seed, we're gonna get, oh, we didn't get level two every time. Okay, we are getting an error message here, which is, Parent node is busy adding children. So basically, since we're doing in this, this in the ready, it's getting mad at us. Um, so what we need to do is change scene to file dot call deferred. We need to give Godot just a minute. It's like, I just barely loaded and now you want me to change scenes? Give me a second. So we'll use call deferred to give it a little bit of time. Now we're no longer getting that error. You can see we're randomly loading a file from our list, a level from our list of levels. Maybe you have a roguelike that you're working on and you want to be able to randomly pick um, a level from a collection of levels in a folder. This approach could work for you. So there you go, that's it for this short little tutorial video. I hope you learned something in this video and enjoyed it. If you are interested in learning more about Godot. I have a lot of free tutorials here on YouTube you can check out. And I'm also running a Black Friday sale on my website, which I can link in the description with some paid courses that you can check out as well. Thank you so much for your support, and I will see you all in the next video.